We're doing a documentary about what football means to people, the World Cup in Qatar. As we're here, we wondered if anyone might speak to us at all. About uh, you don't have an appointment, right? No. 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 The 2022 World Cup is anything but straightforward. Marred in accusations of bribery and human rights abuses, it has also been praised for being the first to be staged in the Middle East. In order to understand the issues that have shaped this event, we're traveling through 17 countries in 17 days, speaking to people on the road from London to Doha. Welcome to our journey to a postmodern World Cup. Where are we, Nick? We are uh, in Zurich. The bank behind us over there is the Barlack Hotel. And we have just recreated the picture of uh, six FIFA executives getting arrested there uh, six years ago, I think, because of the various elements of corruption that went into awarding a couple of World Cups. So we're now going to go and see if we can actually go in the front door. But and for me, an orange juice, please. please. Sorry? An orange juice, please. Of course. Thank you. We've just ordered some, a couple of drinks, um, which would go expense. All in the name of journalism. Which might be our daily allowance for, uh, for the day. On, from here, we're going to go and go to FIFA HQ and see what's going on there. After a 14 euro orange juice, we decided to head to FIFA headquarters and try and fix football ourselves. Also, we saw us in Vanker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, and we just walked right in. We are in the belly of the beast. It feels very strange to be here. It's quite odd that there were some turnstiles back there we would just walk through. So maybe FIFA are much more welcoming than we thought. Let's go and have a look. A documentary about okay. the, the what football means to people, um, the World Cup in Qatar. Um, so we just wondered. I know we probably should have called ahead in advance, but as we're here, we wondered if anyone might speak to us at all. I'm going to have a look. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yes, you just request. have a yeah, Thanks so much. So, Laurie. What the hell happened um, when we went to go visit the Viva headquarters in Zurich? Yeah, we didn't have an appointment. We weren't sure we were going to be able to get in, but we did through a turnstile. Uh, went down into the reception, asked if we could speak to somebody. They were a little bit surprised that we just turned up, uh, but actually they did accommodate us. We spoke to somebody uh, who works for FIFA. We were able to therefore put these points to them. Um, it was all off the record though, so it wasn't for publication, uh, but at least it was somebody that we could speak to. And then we bumped into Arsene Wenger outside. He's FIFA technical uh, director and uh, he signed our ball, which we're going to auction off for charity. Of course, this was the week before he made the statement saying that teams who were being political were suffering on the pitch. But uh, anyways, let's move on to the next one. Gotta say, you gotta love it when the journals are doing the work for you. Uh, oh yeah. Now, we're going to Milan, in Italy. See what life is like in a country not going to this World Cup. That right there is the San Siro, which only got its roof for the World Cup in 1990. Then dinner and bed. Lots on tomorrow. We're going to see the uh, original model of the current World Cup trophy. Um, it's designed by a Milanese uh, trophy maker in the 1970s. That was Silvio Gazzaniga. We're going to see his son, Giorgio, whose work alongside his son maintains the family legacy, recreating Silvio's workshop just outside the city. He was thinking to be different. To be different means to put inside the metal movement. And this are the first idea was to do two line like a spiral, starting from zero to blowing uh, with the top of the world. Will you watch this tournament? I know Italy aren't in it. How does that feel? Uh, I'm happy. I'm the, 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 the I'm the brother. I'm the brother of the, the yeah. <laughs> to be brother of the sister. Oh, unfortunately, everybody kissed my sister. <laughs> but, 
But however, I am the brother and they have to suffer. <laughs> He had the story down to a T, he said he's been telling it for 40 years, so uh, you know he should have every aspect of it sorted. But some really funny lines, he called the World Cup his little sister, and he gets disgruntled when he sees lots of men kissing his little sister after they've won it, obviously, and lifted the trophy. But yeah, really nice guy. Quick sandwich, and off to Venice. Okay, we're in uh, Venezia. We're about to get on a boat. We're gonna go around the city. We're gonna talk to some people about the World Cup and Italy and how that, how that's kind of meshing this t this year, whether people are bothered about it with Italy not being there, and also just have a very relaxing evening in a lovely place. <laughs> All right, there we go. I think, I think people that, that are really passionate about soccer, like they will still, because I mean, as I do watch basketball, even if there's not the Italian team in it, uh, like I still watch it because I love the sport. So if someone loves the sport, no matter your team is in, you will watch even the other matches, like you don't care about it. I feel like a place like Qatar, where there's a huge disparity be with, between people being like super rich and people being super poor, and deciding to host those kind of events, which of course are like, I mean, the antithesis of being like uh, green and promoting like a green style of like uh, doing sports or stuff like that, and building like huge stadiums just for it, that will probably not be used after the World Cup, as it happens in many places. Uh, they I are think that some down. I think some of them are, you can take some of them down. Mm -hmm. yeah. But still, like it's. Like you move so many people to do stuff like this in like work condition that I've read were not the best yeah. for yeah. them. A lot of people got killed. Yeah. They say this place may not exist in a hundred years. Meanwhile, we're headed to a country seemingly built overnight. That's all a bit too much to think about though. So we ordered some spritzes off a of Teletext menu. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel.